Hi, this is Mrs. LaBarbara. This is AP Physics Chapter 5, Applying Newton's Laws, Video 2. Today's topic is using Newton's second law dynamics of particles. Objectives are understand problem solving strategies and be able to solve a variety of dynamic problems. Newton's second law says when the net external force is not balanced, there is acceleration. The net force equals to the mass of the body times its acceleration. Sum of F equals MA. To break it down into component form, sum of Fx equals to MAX, sum of Fy equals to MAY. Question, M times A does not belong to free body diagram because M times A is the net force. Problem solving strategies 5.2, identify. Use Newton's second law, identify target variable, set up. Sketch a picture of a situation, choose a set of coordinate axes, and draw the free body diagram for each body involved. Execute. Find component forces. Set sum of fx equals max and sum of fy equals may for each body involved. You may also need motion equations. Evaluate. Check, if to, uh, check to see if the answers make sense. Example 5.6. Straight line motion with a constant force. An uh, ice boat is at rest on a perfectly frictionless horizontal surface. A wind is blowing along the direction of the runners, so that four seconds after ice boat is released, it attains a velocity of six meters per second. What constant horizontal force Fw does the wind exert on the ice boat? The mass of the ice boat and rider is 200 kilograms. Sketch the situation, right? Free body diagram, so there are uh, upward force, normal force, downward force, mg, and the horizontal force is from the wind because it is frictionless. Write down everything you know. Mass is 200, initial velocity is 0, final velocity is 6, and in the time of 4 seconds, sum of the force in the x direction is just the wind, that equals max. So how do, uh, from here, v naught v and t we can find acceleration acceleration is 1.5 then plug into the equation we have the force of wind 300 newtons does this answer make sense well 300 newtons is much less than the weight of the boat which is about 2000 newtons why is that this is because ax is 1.5 meters per second this is much smaller than g 9.8 meters per second squared Next example, straight line motion with friction. Suppose a constant horizontal friction force with magnitude of 100 newtons opposed, opposes the motion of the ice boat in the last example. In this case, what constant force must the wind exert on the ice boat to cause the same constant x acceleration? Free body diagram. Again, you have no more force gravity. You have the force from the wind. This time you have a friction force is opposite of your force from the wind. Write down everything um, is given. Mass is given 200. Acceleration we already figured out is 1.5. By the way, this is Ax. Force of friction is 100 newtons. Net force in this case is force of the wind minus force of friction. That equals Max. What is the force of the wind equals to? Plug everything. Force of wind equals 400 newtons. Does this make sense? Well, because there is friction, so greater force of the wind is needed. We need 100 newtons just to overcome friction. Then we need another 300 more to give the ice boat a necessary acceleration of 1.5 meters per second squared. That's why we have 400 newtons. That does make sense. Another example, tension in an elevator cable. An elevator and its load have a total mass of 800 kilograms. The elevator is originally moving downward at 10 meters per second. It slows to a stop with constant acceleration in a distance of 25 meters. Find the tension T in the supporting cable while the elevator is being brought to rest. Sketch the diagram, the elevator, and the free body diagram. So on the elevator, there's tension acting on the elevator. There's gravity acting on the elevator. That's the only two forces. We know acceleration is upward because the elevator is coming downward to a stop. Write down what is given to you. Mass is 800. Initial velocity is negative 10 because it's downward. Because according to our coordinate, upward is positive. So initial velocity is negative. 
final velocity is zero. Also, displace the displacement. You are moving downward. Displacement is negative 25 meters. We know some of the force is T and mg is T minus mg. That should be equal to MAY. The answer is what is T? So again, we can find AY from this equation. Uh, from the given variables, AY equals VY squared minus V naught squared divided by 2Y. Substitute all the numbers in, you'll have 2 meters per second squared. And finally, substitute into T minus MG equals MAY. You have T equals 9,440 newtons. So the tension is greater than the weight. Let's see, weight is about 8,000 newtons. The tension is tension is the tension supposed to be greater than weight? Yes, the night force must be upward to provide upward acceleration that brings the elevator to a stop. That does make sense. Example 5.9, apparent weight, normal force in an accelerating elevator. So a five kilogram woman stands on the bath on a bathroom scale while riding the elevator in the last example. What is the rating on the scale? So here is the sketch of the diagram. Here is a free body diagram. On a woman, there are two forces, normal force and gravity. So there's no horizontal force. Again, upward is positive. In this case, we know mass is 50 kilograms. We know the woman is accelerating with the elevator. So her acceleration is positive upward, two meters per second squared. Sum of the force should be equals to n minus mg, and that should give you may. What is n? Well, n should be 590 newtons. Take a look. This n does not equal to mg. Does that make sense? This answer means that while the elevator is stopping, the scale pushes up on a woman with a force of 590 newtons. So by Newton's third law, she must push it down on the scale with the same force. That's why the scale's rating is 590 newtons, which is 100 newtons more than the actual weight. This scale rating is called the passenger's apparent weight. That means actually she weighs more when the elevator is going upward. So the woman feels the floor is pushing up harder on her feet than the elevator is stationary or moving with constant velocity. So basically she feels heavier when the elevator is accelerating upward. So let's take a look at the concept of apparent weight and apparent weightlessness. When a passenger with mass m rides in an elevator with y acceleration a y, the scale shows the passenger's apparent weight to be n equals to m times g plus a y. So this, when the elevator is accelerating, your scale that is not equals to your weight. So the when the elevator is accelerating upward, a y is positive. Therefore, n is greater than the passenger's weight. That's when you will feel you are, you feel heavier. When the elevator is accelerating downward, AY is negative. Therefore, N is less than weight. So you feel lighter. So you might have even go on a ride in the amusement park. Sometimes you feel heavier. Sometimes you feel lighter. This is why, because N, what you feel is N. What you, you can feel your weight. You feel your weight through, uh, you feel weight, your weight through the normal force. So when you are free falling, when AY equals negative G, the elevator is in free fall, N equals to zero. So you don't feel anything. That's when you feel weightlessness because there is no contact. You can only feel through contact force. When there is no contact force, you don't feel anything. You feel like you have no weight, weightlessness. So when an astronaut orbits the Earth in a spacecraft, both the astronaut and spacecraft accelerate with the same acceleration around Earth or falling around Earth, just like a passenger free falling with the elevator. This is why astronauts experience apparent weightlessness, feels weightlessness, because there is no contact force. However, in each case, in the elevator case or the astronaut case, the person is not truly weightless because there is always a weight, weight equals mg. There is always a gravitational weight acting on the person. They just feel, they don't feel it because there's no contact force acting on it. 
That's it for today. Thanks for watching. See you next time.